One of the realities of the pandemic is that a lot of us are working from home for the first time, often with our families, kids, pets, and um, we really have to learn how to set clear boundaries. Zach and I, my partner Zach and I, have been working from home together for five years now, and we are still trying to work out the kinks. Um, so we decided to make this video um, in hopes that it might be helpful for some, just sharing what we've learned. Um, of course, this advice is, is specific to us, and we don't have kids, which I know changes the dynamics tremendously. Um, but we do talk about our struggle with a, kind of a codependent relationship and what that means, as well as how we set boundaries with one another, how we are flexible with those boundaries, and also how we talk about and manage my anxiety disorder together as a couple. Today, I am joined by my partner, Zachary March, um, and apparently also by our dog, <laughs> Odin, who, uh, can't be too far from Zach for very long. <laughs> Zachary, what is it that you do exactly? <laughs> I work with wood. I build things. I um, I'm a songwriter, singer, actor. Yeah. And when we met, you were dancing. Was dancing a lot. Yes. Yep. So you're an actor, dancer, singer, woodworker. <laughs> Songwriter. Yeah, I guess so, yeah. Yes. Before we kind of met, I, it, it was kind of a little more simple, I would say, in terms of I had a job, and I knew that I was making a set amount of money, and I could concentrate on that. And then once that was done, once that job was over, then I had that like, free range to be creative or create art or anything like that so I would have day jobs you know and then when I wasn't working to make money I was dancing or acting or yeah but once I went all in <clears throat> as an artist it, it, I think it became a lot more tricky so all in meaning quitting your day job quitting the day job yeah and sort of relying on my my art to to make money and i think right. that's that was a very sort of it was a tough turning point especially in in our relationship but yeah it was hard the the idea of tr just creating a schedule or setting goals like i had never had to do that before it was always like work and then play almost right um so yeah i think i think it depends on where you're at probably right and i really wanted you to quit your day job you really <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you really did well I, I think i was just a lot more stressed i just wasn't as happy as i am now like you know working working on in you know my craft and my art every day yeah it's a lot more fulfilling you were a big inspiration in, in the push for me to you know sort of expand like a, the idea of picking one thing and and going all in was always like the advice that I got from you know people in it within the industry or, or mentors that I was studying with the idea of doing multiple things and being successful especially in the entertainment industry was kind of uh, a little taboo I, I would say yeah. um, so yeah I think you finding out that I that I loved to do these things as hobbies and and you encouraging sort of saying look you could potentially make money doing this you could you could you know x y z right because you were making money as an actor and yes. you were making money as a dancer right but you were not making money doing woodworking or or playing music that was just for fun yeah exactly and then kind of realizing maybe you could do all those things realizing by you saying you can do all those <laughs> things 
<laughs> I'm a little bossy. That's no, <laughs> not bossy. Definitely not. But you were, you, yeah, you you were very, very supportive in your push for me to do these things. Well, and I think the reason why it's maybe relevant to talk about now is because I feel like a lot of your frustration with acting and dancing was that it was not self, um, like you had to wait to be offered a job. Like you had to um, audition and audition and then... I mean, can you talk about that a little bit, about how you've moved more towards, like, self-motivated work? Absolutely. It was more appealing to me as, as a dancer and as a, uh, an actor for someone to, for me to go on audition, someone to hand me some lines and say, this is exactly what we need you to do, bring, bring a little something, something to the table, and then, yeah, that, and then go home, and that, that was fulfilling for for a long time for me, but you know, sort of growing up and you know, integrating the things that I was learning as, as being an artist, understanding you know what worked for me and what didn't work for me, it slowly became a little more frustrating, I guess, when you sort of don't have as much say in in how you're coming across as an artist right but i i think i think that's a big deal for me now is to is to really understand what what i you know what my voice is and what i want to say and just to do it exactly how i feel it should be done was the arts a big part of your upbringing no, for a long time, I thought that, you know, well, when I was young, I thought that I was going to be in sports. The idea of, of art was always sort of this thing that I really loved to do. And yeah, I, I think that it wasn't always sort of taken seriously where I was from. Um, at, at the time at least um, but because I, I think because I um, was heavily involved in, in sports and it was a like a small town where sports was a big deal um, and in Kentucky it, it's a big deal um, I think I got a I got a pass I got a I got a pass by most of the community because um, they, they knew that I did I did both so. so you were allowed to do both because you were excelling in sports. Is that yeah, what you're saying? Yes. The coaches were like, that you know, these things you're doing, theater and dance, like that, these things probably aren't going to work out for you. <laughs> and that, that was that was pretty much it. I was like, okay, well then, that makes makes up my mind. They um, told you you had to pick. Basically. They didn't tell me that, but they, I, you could see like just the workout schedule yeah. alone was, yeah, it didn't lend itself to. To do both, I don't think. Right. I remember um, being in, incredibly nervous to sort of drop that bomb of, yeah, it's, you know, I'm going to be dancing around in a leotard and, you know, painting canvases for the rest of my life. And I remember that just being a very awkward conversation to have. With your father? My biological father, yes. Yeah. yeah. I think another another big deal was was that my, my parents my mother and my, my stepfather were incredibly supportive. You know, even though my my stepfather didn't fully understand what the hell I was doing, you know, outside of, of sports. I think, I, I think it, it didn't matter. At least it felt like it, it didn't matter, you know, to them, especially to my mom. She, I mean, yeah, I could be selling drugs on the street and she would find a way 
to praise me somehow, you know, I, I don't know. Unconditional but, love. Absolutely yeah. unconditional love. <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And that was a big, Yeah. I, I think that was a big proponent in why <clears throat> I even wanted to go to college. And... The biggest part of us figuring out how to both live and work together from home, right? Which we've been doing for about six years mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you quit your day job in 2015. Right. Yeah. So it's been about five years. Yeah. Um, so we've been practicing this for a long time and it takes a lot of practice. So I think that's our first message for those of you who are working from home with your family for the first time since March. Um, yeah, we've been doing this for about five years and it's, it's a lot of work. It's very difficult. Yes. Yeah. Very, very much. I think the biggest thing, and we're going to share what we've learned, but I think the biggest thing is that if you don't know what you need to be creative, then it's going to be impossible to ask for what you need. Um, and it's kind of a surprise to realize that you don't know what you actually need to, to get those creative juices flowing. I thought we could play a fun game where, um, <laughs> where we each share what we think the other needs to be creative. So, so like you say, what you've learned over the years that I need to be creative. Okay. Or, okay. Like creative, motivated, focused, like to get your work done. Okay. And then I'll share what I think you need. Okay. <laughs> to be. Yeah, yeah, I like it. Okay, so I don't yeah. who should start? You sh yeah, you should start. Okay. So, Zach needs to make a lot of noise. <laughs> That's regardless of if he's dancing, acting, <laughs> you know, sawing, you know, so just, we live in a three bedroom apartment. I, I mean, sorry, a three bedroom house Yeah. and, um, in Eagle Rock and, um, <laughs> this, this bedroom is my studio and then we have our actual bedroom and then the bedroom over there is Zach's wood shop. So he has all sorts of, you know, equipment he has saws and yes he needs high power machinery <laughs> to be creative that sure. makes a lot of noise right. um or if you're playing music or if you're dancing you also have music play oh sometimes you wear headphones but um anyway so that's the first one is i think zach needs to make a lot of noise um <laughs> zach does not need to be alone which is interesting you have to tell me if I'm right or wrong. Okay. So how am I doing so far? <laughs> Spot on. Okay. I'm noisy. Get You're it. noisy. I get it. Okay. Um, <laughs> he does not need to be alone. So I think because you grew up in a house with three siblings, um, like Zach is able to focus and I can talk to him. And if he's focusing, he won't hear me. Would you say that's correct? Yeah, I think okay. so. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. I think you definitely need your own space. Um, you've settled for, like, I've seen you work very well in a corner, like literally in a corner <laughs> with your, like facing the corner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll talk more about this, but you also have done work in our closet before, but I think you're happier when you have your own space, like an actual room. Would you say that's true? Yeah. I think that's absolutely correct. Okay. You also like working outside. Like sometimes I'll come in and you're just like you're writing lyrics or notes to yourself on your phone. And so one thing I do is I ask if you're working or not sometimes. Right, right. Because Zach also spends more time in our shared, in our living room. Yeah. So he'll work in our living room. And so when I come in, I ask if he's working Right. Or not, because I don't want to just like launch into my, because I used to do that a lot. I would just <laughs> launch into whatever was going on for me and not right. realize that you were working. I just thought you were just kind of like scrolling Facebook yeah. or whatever. Right, right, right. Okay. Did I leave anything out in terms of I don't think so. stuff you need? Wow. Okay. So what do I need? Oh, gosh. Um... Okay, well, I definitely know that you need your own space. When we first started dating, um, I remember uh, I was at your place, and 
you asked me to leave and I remember being like, oh, what, what's, what's going on? Like, is everything okay? And you said, oh no, everything's fine. Uh, I just, I just have to work. And I was like, oh, oh, okay. Yeah, that's fine. That's absolutely. And then I just, just left. But I remember understanding that, that, that right off the bat, that that's absolutely one thing you needed to, to be sort of, you needed to feel like you had enough space to work. Right. The reason why I needed you to leave was because, um, I was going to compose Yes. in yeah. what was the living room, right? Because there was just sort of like, it was this big, it was this big open room with like the, the table, the kitchen, yeah. the piano, my desk, and then the bedroom was tiny and kind of off to the side. So yeah, there was, small. there was, it was this idea that like, I didn't want to compose in the same like room, like with you in the same room, right. even though there was multiple right. spaces. I would say that you need emotional support and, you know, whatever that might be. I, I would say <clears throat> for most of the time it would be sort of sidestepping, you know, whatever, whatever is in your 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 way at the time and and I think you do that really well through talking to somebody else about it so I think that's it's a it's one of the tools that you have to sort of get this thing that's in your way out of the way so that you can then go into work does that make sense yeah yeah can you give an example You'll go into your studio, you'll be in there for a couple hours, and then you'll come out, ask me if I'm busy, and if I'm not, whether or not I wanted to talk about something, right. and then we would talk about it, and then, you know, nine times out of ten, it would just be you talking about it that sort of, you know, got it out of your system or... or you were able to like put it on the back burner long enough to get back to work. So, right. I think the big thing for me that I learned over the years and I'm still learning is like respecting your boundaries mm. of like whatever headspace you're in or whatever you're working on mm. before I just sort of unload whatever <laughs> is stressing me out or yeah, whatever hang up I'm trying to work through with my work. Yeah, but I, I don't, I think the other tricky part is that I don't, I don't think I, I don't, I think me being a very sort of codependent personality, I, I wasn't very good at asking for that space. Um, when we first started dating, that that, right. that had to, that was very much something that we learned along the way, and it's still very very hard for me to do because I know that you are struggling and I know that you do need, you know, to talk maybe, and for me to say no, right? Like I'm working, you know, uh, can this wait? Is very very hard for me to do. Yeah, and it was harder when it was the beginning of these explorations where, like, you were not necessarily making money yet. Exactly. Then it gets even harder. Like, yeah. well, let's put this aside. But it's, yeah. So that was a joint thing we had to, to work towards. My also not just, like, assuming that Zach could be ready and available at all times to listen to my inner turmoil. <laughs> um, <laughs> turmoil. <laughs> And, and respecting that, like, he needs his space to, to, to work and that his work is just as important as my work. That was another big one, too. Yeah. It took us a long time. It was yeah. very, very hard. Still, still struggle with it. Yeah, and especially because a lot of my work is, is deadline, or, like, oriented. So there was a yeah. lot of stress leading up to the deadlines. Yeah. Um, 
I think like to to piggyback that point, I think the idea of both of us sort of being flexible, I think with our with our time or our space, I, I think I think I don't want to speak for you, but I think we're able to do that. I, I'm, I'm definitely able to do that. The idea of me getting something done at a certain time d doesn't necessarily trump the idea of me, you know, making space for to talk to Julia. Yeah, I think that, that flexibility came with a lot of practice, but it did make things easier as far as, you know, being available and sort of not being available. Yeah. And, and yeah, and for, and for me too, that like, just because I had a deadline didn't mean that I couldn't make space for you and whatever you might want to talk about. Right. And that was hard too, to kind of take responsibility that like I was rushing to the deadline for my own reasons, like my own, I don't want to say it was my own fault, but like it was up to me to balance what I needed and to make our life here a prior just as much a priority as my career sure yeah yeah okay so so we were at, <laughs> we got, so my needs you were saying are some type of feedback i think you do you do really really well with some type of feedback even if it's just maybe listening to something and saying yay or nay and that's so easy to do, but it seems like, I don't know, it seems like that's, it's very beneficial for you. Yeah, I really, well, I mean, part of it too is, is your actual response, like your actual opinion. Sure. So Zach, Makes like, sense. and, and this was kind of part of, I feel like how, at least I started to understand how musical you are. Because, um, like, when we met, you know, you were very much, like, you're an actor and a dancer, and you weren't thinking of yourself as a musician in any way. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But I noticed that, like, when I was playing my, my pieces for you, like, as I was writing, that you had very, very concrete responses. Like, very emotional responses, but also, like specifically with narrative and and like helping me shape the arc um so you would listen and you would feel like you would say oh I feel like this this could be stretched or like it needs like I, I feel like this went too quickly I couldn't process it um you know maybe it could be warmer here like these very almost like you didn't have the the vocabulary of like a from a musical education but you had the um dramatic vocabulary your specific response right, to right. the piece as it was unfolding is very helpful for me in my writing process. That makes sense. Yeah. It seems like writing for you um, takes, sort of takes a lot out of you. Like it, I've seen you come in to this studio and you'll be in here for you know, eight, ten hours sometimes and you'll come out and you're just completely exhausted. And I think some type of like, whether it's like you decompress or you, I don't, you watch something, you know, mundane and, and, and easy or you or we just sit in the same room together some some form of like you have all this stuff inside you that you know whatever residuals are left from you exhausting yourself in the in the studio you then need some type of like let it all go in you know into whatever space that you right that you need to maybe like go on with the rest of your day or even fall asleep yeah I think you need your own decompression space. 
I would say that's absolutely like, correct. Like, I want to decompress together. <laughs> right, 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 right. Zach needs his own, like... Yeah. Even if you're like, I just need five minutes. I think you said that last night. I need five minutes just of sit, nothing. Just sit here. <laughs> the only other thing I would add, I mean, it's kind of part of having your own space, is quiet. Mm. But you don't always need that, though. That's true. Because there I've are times better. where you're like, make a bunch of noise. Yeah. <laughs> do, do that's, that. that's the other thing is we communicate very specifically, like, who can be noisy when. Like, we figure that out. That's a good point. Almost yeah. every morning. So basically, I feel like the biggest thing we've been working towards is boundaries, right? Like, yes. or what we're saying are flexible boundaries. So what what do you think a flexible boundary is? Because it sounds like an oxymoron, but... Um... <laughs> yeah, I, well, I, I think for me, it's because I, I, I definitely need a very sort of very straightforward schedule I think I need it laid out for the day I have a goal and I want to meet that goal and if I don't do it it doesn't sit right with me and I then it you know the wheels come off pretty quickly so I think having a straightforward schedule for the day with that end goal is crucial but at the same time the details of oh this happens you know in this hour or this thing has to happen after this i think i can sort of let go in that way Mm -hmm. just as long as i get to that end goal right i think how i get there is less important yeah and sometimes it's also like this is goal one this is goal two so like maybe you have three goals for the day but sure. only one of them, like, has to happen. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then the other two, it's like, I'm going to do my best. Yes. I mean, now that we're, we're, I'm feeling more comfortable talking openly about my anxiety and mental health, I think there's other, like, mental health flexible boundaries, too, where, you know, I might feel like I need to talk about my anxiety with Zach. Like, I'm feeling anxious and I want the anxiety to go away and so I want Zach uh, so you know I think that Zach I know that talking to Zach makes me feel better so it's also about me understanding like that I can't use Zach to help to make my anxiety goes away whenever I want right that it has to be sure um you know on on both of our terms and so the idea of flexible boundaries in that sense is like my saying like hey Zach I'm really anxious about something I read in the news or I'm really anxious about um what what's going on in my piece right now like it's not working and I'm struggling and then um you being able to say okay well let's talk about this in an hour or let's talk about it or like or even asking me, can you wait an hour? Sure. Yeah. Because sometimes I can't. <laughs> That's true. Which, which is fine. It's, it's okay. Because then, you know, we're flexible. We're flexible. <laughs> but, but then it's also like good practice for me, right? Because that's the other thing is it's important for, for me to not default yeah. to leaning on Zach when I'm struggling like to get anxious thoughts out of my head it's hard to do yeah yeah but i feel like it's gotten easier since you've been more clear with your boundaries because i've had to practice it absolutely yeah 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 they just they weren't serving each other at all yeah there's no way they could it was tough yeah and that's like a common i mean you use the word codependent earlier but that's like a common codependency issue i would assume (laughs) yeah (laughs) where like one 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 person in the couple is struggling um it's usually actually described with like alcoholism but you know one person in the couple is struggling with um mental health or mental illness or alcoholism or some kind of like substance abuse and then the other partner is um 
like inadvertently enabling it sure. like so this partner is using this partner and then this partner is inadvertently enabling right. or allowing being used yeah for support yeah so who's the alcoholic in our relationship <laughs> That's another video. That's a different video. <laughs> so maybe we can share how we started to learn some of these lessons. Um, specifically as we moved, like, cause we've, this is our third place together. Mm -hmm. And a lot of those moves came from realizing the spaces we were living in were not working. You want to start talking about our, our one bedroom where we met? But at that time I was still working a couple day jobs outside of any art that I was that I was doing so it was very easy for me to have that you know that idea of I'm making money I it doesn't matter if I you know have a space within this apartment right to you know be creative or yeah it was very much my space that yes. you moved into yes and I remember our friend Thomas came over and said um, why, how come there's no sign that Zach lives here? <laughs> do you remember that? <laughs> yes. Yeah, One thing we did do was because I really knew that I wanted Zach to move in. And so um, we changed the one bedroom became my studio and we moved the bed out into. Right. So it basically felt like a studio apartment right. with my little music room off to the side. Right. So that's how I kind of got around this idea of. You know, being a, like Zach not having to leave the house <laughs> yeah. when I was writing. So I was actually able to go in and close the door. But what that meant basically was that our bedroom was in the living room, was in the kitchen. Yeah. Um, and then like we were on different sleep schedules. Right. Because you also like would get up at four in the morning to go to work. Right. Um, so that caused other like things we had to work around. <laughs> It's a little stressful, yeah. It was the first time I had ever lived with somebody who I was dating. Yeah, me too. And so I was ready and willing to, like, you know, make sacrifices. I just assumed that everybody sort of deals with that sort of thing, you know? Okay, so then we moved to Silver Lake. It worked for a while, I think. It really did. Yeah. And then that was sort of the... That was sort of the, 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 the time where I was, where you encouraged me to sort of explore this woodworking side of, you know, sort of making woodworking into a career, basically. I turned a closet into a wood shop. <laughs> it was, no, the dimensions were, I remember specifically, two and a half feet by five yeah, five and a half feet. Two and a half feet by five and a half feet. And I worked. I was carving carving bowls. I was building cabinetry. Yeah, everything in that tiny closet, basically. And you put, like, tarps up. Without Yeah, so later on, once sort of the demand became a little higher and I needed to work a little more quickly, then I had to invest in a lot of power tools. Yeah, and then I remember you saying, like, we need to move. If we wanted to be serious about, yeah, both of our careers, then we had to have our own space. Yeah. I think another big thing that we do that's really helpful is that we check in with each other throughout the day, but it's also about how we check in with mm. each other. Yeah. Um, so I remember, I remember, too, like, on days where we're struggling... Um, so like if I, if I have a day where I'm really struggling to write, um, that you ask me if I've worked out that day or if I've journaled that day, like that, or yeah, that there, there, there's sort of a, like, how are you doing? Is there something going yeah. on with you? Right. Not like, why aren't you working? Like you've said, you've had, you have this big deadline and yet you're, yeah. you know, lying in the hammock, like what's going on? Um, so that there's sort of this focus on, like, is there something going on with your mental health or just your emotional state of well-being? Yeah. Um, Have you gone into your toolbox 
and picked through your tools yet. Yeah, and developing that toolbox. Yeah. What are some of the things in your toolbox? I think exercise is the 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 biggest tool that I that I that I have. I think when there is something that I'm struggling with, 99% of the time, I am able to focus on it and either, you know, deal with it or set it aside as long as I'm you know, working out, eating right, yeah, staying healthy. If I have a question or I want to discuss something either about my work or about our life or something, I wait until after you've eaten and after you've exercised. And I think the other rules are, um, like, no work talk after 7 We've been more flexible about that since the pandemic, but... It's not a hard rule. It's not a hard rule? Yeah. But what was the idea behind that rule? I think the idea is that it is that decompression space for us. It is... We've worked all day, and now we just want to hang out, decompress, have a good time, and just laugh. Yeah, and I think part of that, too, is that we since we both work alone... There is that kind of desire to talk about your work with another person. Um, So, I mean, because, and then we do talk to each other about work during the day. Like, if I need your help with something, or you want my advice on something you're working on, Mm -hmm. that happens during work hours, so to speak. Yeah, it does. Um, And then, you know, we also talk to other friends and colleagues about what we're doing. So it doesn't all get doesn't have to get processed in the evening yeah it it really works for us yeah yeah and then for me there's just the one last rule um that i'm i'm not supposed to ask existential questions after 8 (laughs) p.m you get very existential and for some reason your anxiety like starts to kind of you know creep its way in for some reason at night like, at night like yeah. what is that <laughs> um that has to do with um i think being afraid to fall asleep ah uh, okay um so. being afraid it's sort of just like being afraid of being alone falling asleep is hard for me i see so a lot of those anxious questions and thoughts come up as it gets close to bedtime. And so, yeah, it's like... But then, of course, there's the, the flexibility of, of, like, is this something we really... Like, do we really need to talk about global warming at 10 p.m.? Or yeah. can we discuss this tomorrow? <laughs> no, but we did. We, we went through... I mean, it was years of, you know, us staying up late and right. discussing the most random... Like, it, it, and it was, and it was existential things. It was yeah. like, what's the meaning of life? And it's like, well, it's 1035. <laughs> I have to work tomorrow. It's past my bedtime. <laughs> I have no idea. But it, it, it became one of those things where we, I did have to set a boundary because right. I, it was, I was suffering, you know, I was waking up and it, it my schedule was suffering because of right. it. One thing that's huge for me is feeling comfortable enough with you so that we can, or me specifically, like I can, I can talk about how I'm feeling with you, even though I might not know exactly how I feel. I think that's, that's a big deal for me because sort of navigating those feelings sometimes are really hard for me. And, and to know that, that, you know, a lot of reasons, like, you're not going to judge me, you're not going to use it against me in some way later on, that I can sort of be in the dark, but sort of talking through the, this sort of cloud that I'm in, and you being like, well, let's figure it out, that, I think that was a game changer for me when, when that started happening early in our relationship. Do you think that part of that reluctance, like, comes from 
being, you know, thinking that being masculine is you're supposed to like have everything sorted out. Oh, I'm sure it, it plays a huge, a huge part in it. Like the idea of, of, you know, having, you know, your stuff together, understanding, you know, it doesn't matter how I feel if I have work to get done, which is so far from the truth. Especially if you're an artist. But... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. But yeah, just, just understanding that I don't know how I feel sometimes, or I don't know what I'm struggling with, and you're okay with just being open and honest about, well, let's talk about it. Let's, let's figure it out. Yeah. And then like trying to not then fix whatever that is. That's a big one. Yeah. Too. Like, let's fix this yeah. problem, this emotion. But yeah. You, know, you can't fix emotions. You just have to. It's so hard to do. Accept them. Yeah. Yeah. Especially you don't want to see your, your partner suffering or struggling. Yeah. This pandemic, you know, th this time has obviously been a curveball for everyone. I think we're incredibly lucky as artists and as as people that we're financially in a, in a, a good spot, so we don't have to be going out and and dealing with other stresses outside of the home. Um, so I think that's, that's something that we've been incredibly grateful for. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think it's also been very important as far as us being creative and, and us being artists. I couldn't imagine sort of like having to go to my job and then coming home and, and trying to write music or, you know, rehearsing lines or something like that. I... I, I just have a lot of admiration for for artists or or anyone who's you know in that that sort of situation. It's got to be tough. I think because it's been so so stressful for everyone that there's just new challenges that sort of come up. You know, it could be day to day, and just to understand that. You know, you as a partner and you as an artist, sometimes you just need different things. You know what I mean? Like, what you need one day might not be the same, you know, next week. And and being okay with that, you know, as an artist and as a partner, I think it's it's especially crucial right now. But yeah, I think we have a, a good understanding of you know, where each other, where we fall, like where we, as far as, you know, how we're dealing with, with the pandemic and how we're dealing with, you know, the struggles, complications, trying to make art, trying to be the best we possibly can. And then sort of letting each other off the hook if, you know, if we struggle. Right. I feel like that's, one of the things we've kind of set up with our check-ins too is that we do check in with each other throughout the day and I feel like part of that is that we have these routines but if the, if like we check in and realize that one of us is like out of sorts in some way yeah. and is struggling or you know right when the pandemic started like oh I just got an email and this premiere is canceled or oh like I just heard from my family and and you know they're struggling with with this area of of their work um yeah. you know being affected by the pandemic um that 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 becomes the the focus when it's when it's a time like this yeah. that those things do get put aside for you know an illness in the family or um yeah yeah, anything that's important like yeah, that. Whatever it might be. Yeah. And it might not be that important. Sure. <laughs> Honestly. Right, or we have ways of defining what's important, Exactly. I guess. Yeah. Well, thank you, <laughs> Zach and Odin. Say, you're welcome, Mom. Yeah, of course. And I'll um, see you in the other room.